Hey guys, Spiderivative Man, back talking to you about derivatives of logarithmic functions. Now I got another question for you. How many Batman does it take to change a light bulb? None! They love the dark. <laughs> First thing we're gonna do is review the chain rule. We talked about this last time. This is just what you do when you have a composite function and you're taking the derivative of that composite function. What you do is you take the derivative of that outer function and leave the inner function alone. Then you multiply whatever that was by the derivative of your inner function. And we'll do more examples today. The derivative of the natural logarithmic function says, let u be a differentiable function of x. Then d dx, or the derivative of ln of x, is equal to 1 over x. We also know that then the derivative, or d dx, of ln of u, if u is a function, would be equal to 1 over u times du dx, or equivalently, u prime over u. Now, what this is saying is that if you take the derivative of ln of x, you get 1 over x. If you take the derivative of ln of u, where u is a function, what you're going to get is 1 over that function times the derivative of that function. So it's like the chain rule. ln of u, if I want to take the derivative of that, it's going to be 1 over u. So the derivative of your outer function times the derivative of your inner function, u. Okay, so the next theorem we're going to talk about talks about derivatives for bases other than e. It says let a be a positive real number, a not equal to 1, and let u be a differentiable function of x. Then d dx, or the derivative of a to the x power, is equal to ln of a times a to the x. Now, this is something you have to memorize. If you are taking the derivative of a number raised to your independent variable, so like 2 to the x power, 5 to the t power, Okay, and you're taking the derivative of that, it's going to be the ln of whatever that base is times the exact thing that you were taking the derivative of. So let's say, for instance, this was 2 to the x power. The derivative of that would be ln of 2 times 2 to the x power. And remember, when we took the derivative of e to the x, it's equal to e to the x. Now, why is that? Because you did this. The derivative of e to the x is ln of e times e to the x. But ln of e, we know, is just equal to 1, so we write e to the x. Part two, it's the exact same thing, except this time we're talking about if up here, instead of just x, it's a function. So if we have a function up here, what you're going to do is have to use the chain rule. So when you take the derivative here, it's going to be ln of a times a to the u, just like it normally would, times the derivative of your exponent. So let's say this is 2 to the 5x power. What you're going to do when you take the derivative of that, it's going to be ln of 2 times 2 to the 5x times the derivative of 5x by the chain rule. Down here, we have the derivative, d dx, of log base a of x, and that's equal to 1 over ln of a times x. Now, this, remember, if we take the derivative of ln of x, that's equal to 1 over ln of e times x, which is equal to 1 over x. That's why this is true. Now, again, this up here, because we're not using log base e anymore, we're using log base a, you have to write the full thing out. When we use the log base e, this just turns into 1, and we have 1 over x. So again, we need to memorize this just like we needed to memorize this. And again, if x is instead a function, we have to use the chain rule. So if we have log base a of u, where u is a function of x, then it's going to be equal to, when we take the derivative of that, 1 over ln of a times u times the derivative of your function u. Now, let's review the properties of logs. It says for all positive numbers, m, n, and b, where b is not equal to 1, the product property, when you're taking the log base b of m times n, where m and n are numbers or functions, what you can do is you can split this up into log base b of m plus log base b of n. So when you're multiplying them together, you can split it up into two logs with the same base and then add those two things. Next, the quotient property says log base b of m over n. You can then rewrite as log base b of m minus log base b of n. So when you're dividing, you separate them with a subtraction sign. And then the power property. This one gets used a lot. Log base b of m to the p power. What you can actually do is take that power and move it out front of the log. And that would be the power property of logarithms. Time to be as smart as Dr. Octavius. It's example time. Now, example one says find the derivative of the following function. So we have f of x is equal to ln of 2x. So when we're taking the derivative here, remember the derivative of the natural log function is 1 over x, right? If you're just taking the derivative of ln of x. But here we have an inner function. Our inner function is 2x. So we're going to call that u. Our outer function then would be ln of u. 
So the chain rule then requires us to take the derivative of our outer function. So the derivative of ln of u is going to be 1 over u. But then we have to multiply that by the derivative of our inner function, which is the derivative of u, or 2x. So you get 1 over 2x, which is the derivative of ln of u. And then multiply that times the derivative of 2x, which is just 2. So you end up getting 2 over 2x, which simplifies to 1 over x. Now part b, we have h of x is equal to log base 5 of x squared plus 1. So when we're taking the derivative of this, recognize that this is going to require the chain rule. We have a function within a function. So our inner function is going to be x squared plus 1. So we're going to say u is equal to x squared plus 1. Our outer function is going to be log base 5 of u. Now, what we can do is we can take the derivative of our outer function, which is log base 5 of u. So that's going to be 1 over ln of your base, which is 5, times your function. Then you're going to have to multiply by the derivative of your inner function, or the derivative of u. So again, derivative of our outer function, derivative of log base 5 of u, is going to be 1 over ln of 5 times your function. Multiply that by the derivative of your inner function, which is the derivative of x squared plus 1, which is 2x. You then put that in the numerator, and you're done. My spidey sense is tingling. It must be time for a u try. Okay, here, we have x times ln of x. And when we take the derivative here, this is obviously going to require the product rule. And the product rule says we're going to do the derivative of the first function times the second function plus the first function times the derivative of the second function. Derivative of x we know is 1. The derivative of ln of x we know is 1 over x. Now over here, 1 times ln of x is ln of x. x times 1 over x is going to be x over x, which is 1. And then you're done. Here, g of x, we want to take the derivative of log of x to the third power. Now, when we take the derivative here, you have to recognize that there is an inner function and an outer function. Therefore, this is going to require the chain rule. So we're going to let u equal our innermost function, which is going to be log of x. And then our outer function then is going to be that log of x to the third power. So if we let u equal log of x, then it's going to be u to the third power. Now, what we can do is we can take the derivative of our outer function. So the derivative of our outer function is going to be 3 log of x to the second power. Then you have to multiply that by the derivative of your inner function, so log of x. And the derivative of log of x we know is 1 over ln of 10 times x. Now, where did the 10 come from? Well, anytime you have a log and the base isn't written, it's base 10. So this is log base 10 of x. So when we take the derivative of this, it's going to be 1 over ln of your base, which is 10, times whatever you're taking the log of, which is x. Now we can simplify this. We can rewrite it so this is our numerator, this is our denominator, and we are done. Now example two, what we want to do is we want to, if we're taking the derivative here, we want to rewrite this so it's easier to take the derivative of. So anytime you have a radical and you're taking the derivative, we want to rewrite it as a rational exponent. So instead of the square root of x plus 1, it's going to be x plus 1 to the 1 half power. Now we're taking the natural log of x plus 1 to the 1 half power. If you recall our properties of logarithms, we have something called the power property. And what that says is that if we are taking the log of something raised to a power, we can actually take that power and move it out front of the log. So this is the same as... 1 half times the natural log of x plus 1. Now we can take the derivative, and the reason we can do it now, and it's easier, is because by the constant multiple rule, we can take this 1 half and move it out front of the derivative sign. Now what we can do is take the derivative over here. And again, you see we have an inner function and an outer function. Our inner function, our u, is going to be x plus 1. Our outer function is the natural log of that x plus 1, or the natural log of that u. So when we take the derivative, we use the chain rule, the derivative of our outer function, so the derivative of natural log is going to be 1 over u times the derivative of our inner function, our u, which is x plus 1. So that's going to be 1 over u, or 1 over x plus 1, times the derivative of x plus 1, which in this case is just 1 plus 0, or 1. We multiply that to the 1 half that's out front, and you're done. <laughs> So we're taking the derivative here, and you can see we have two functions being multiplied together, so we are going to use the product rule. The product rule says we're going to take the derivative of our first function times our second function, and then add that to our first function times the derivative of our second function. Now, when we're taking the derivative of e to the negative 5x, you can see we have a function within a function. So our inner function is going to be negative 5x, so we're going to set that equal to u. That's our innermost function. That means our outer function is going to be e to the u. Over here, when we're taking the derivative of ln of 4x, we're going to set u equal to our innermost function, which is 4x, and then our outer function then would be ln of u. Now, when we simplify this, we're going to take the derivative of our outer function, which is e to the u, and again, the derivative is also e to the u. 
We then multiply that by the derivative of our inner function, by the chain rule. So we multiply that by the derivative of negative 5x. So again, we took the derivative of e to the u, which is e to the u, or e to the negative 5x. We then multiply that by the derivative of our inner function, derivative of negative 5x. And again, that's times ln of 4x plus e to the negative 5x times our derivative of ln of 4x. When we take the derivative of ln of u, that would be 1 over u, or in this case, 1 over 4x, times the derivative of our innermost function, the derivative of 4x by the chain rule. So when we simplify this, derivative of negative 5x is going to be negative 5 times 1. Derivative of 4x is going to be 4 times 1. And those become 5 and 4, respectively. This negative 5 then pops out front. And this over here, this 4, when I multiply it to the 1 over 4x, becomes 4 over 4x times that e to the negative 5x, which I can then bring to the denominator also. Same thing over here. e to the negative 5x comes to the denominator. I can rewrite this ln of 4x in my numerator. The 4 here and the 4 here cancel each other out and I'm left with my derivative. Now example three, doing the derivative again, and here we have f of x is equal to three to the x power. Now when we're taking the derivative here, remember, when we have a number raised to our independent variable, it's gonna be ln of our number times the exact same thing, three to the x. So it's gonna be ln of three, ln of our base, times three to the x. Here we have log base four of x, and we take the derivative here, it's one over ln of our base, which is four, times whatever we're taking the log of. So this is gonna be one over ln of four times our x. And again, we can just rewrite this as one over x times ln of four. Don't be a vulture, do your own work. You try. Here, we're taking the derivative of log base 10 of x. So that's gonna be one over ln of 10, ln of our base, times whatever we're taking the log of, which is x. Rewrite that x out front, and we're done. Over here, we're taking the derivative of 15 to the x power. Now remember, the derivative, when we have a to the x, or some number raised to our independent variable, that's gonna be equal to ln of our base, which is 15, times the exact same thing, 15 to the x power. Example four says find the derivative of the following function. So we want to find the derivative of log base 10 of cosine of x. So again, when we take the derivative, we have a function within a function. So we're going to set u equal to our innermost function, which is cosine of x. And then our outermost function is going to be log base 10 of u. So now, when you take the derivative here, you take the derivative of your outer function. The derivative of log base 10 of u is going to be 1 over ln of our base, which is 10 times our u, which in this case is cosine of x. So it's going to be 1 over ln of 10 times cosine of x. Now, by the chain rule, we then have to multiply by the derivative of our innermost function. So the derivative of cosine of x we know is going to be negative sine of x, which we can then put in our numerator. And is there anything we can simplify? Well, we can rewrite, if we wanted to, negative sine x over cosine of x. We could just take that negative out front, and sine of x over cosine of x becomes tan x. So we have negative 1 over ln of 10 times the tangent of x. <laughs> Again, when we take the derivative of a number raised to a power that has our independent variable in it, what we want to do is we're going to use the ln of our base, which is 2, times our whole thing again, which would be 2 to the 3x power. But in this instance, we're not just raising it to the x power or to the t power. It's raised to the 3x, which means we have to use the chain rule. We have an inner function, which is 3x. So we're going to set that equal to u. That means our outer function would be 2 to the u power. So when we take the derivative by the chain rule, we take the derivative of our outer function, so the derivative of 2 to the u is going to be ln of 2 times 2 to the u, or ln of 2 times 2 to the 3x. But then by the chain rule, you have to multiply it by the derivative of 3x, which in this case is 3. So 3 times ln of 2 times 2 to the 3x is going to be 3 times ln of 2 times 2 to the 3x, and you're done. Don't try to simplify this any further. What you could do is take this 3 and move it up here so it's ln of 2 to the third power or ln of 8, but that would be the most you could simplify it. Now example 5, we're again taking the derivative, but this time we have a log base 3 of a rational function, which looks crazy, like there's no way we could take the derivative of this. What we want to do is we want to use our properties of logs to make this a little easier on ourselves. So we are going to split this up using the quotient property. And what that said is if we have the log of two things being divided, what we can do is actually split it up into two separate logs, make them have the same base, and separate them with a subtraction. So this is going to be log base 3 of our numerator minus log base 3 of our denominator. 
Now, simplify this even more so. The square root of x is the same thing as x to the 1 half power. And by the power properties of logs, we can actually take this 1 half power and move it out front of our log. Now we're ready to take the derivative. And when you take the derivative of this function, we take the derivative of each term separately. Here, this 1 half is going to come out front, and we can take the derivative of log base 3 of x. That's easy. It's going to be 1 over ln of 3 times x. Here, this is actually going to require the chain rule. Our inner function is going to be this x plus 5, so we'll set that equal to u. That means our outer function is going to be log base 3 of u. So we'll take the derivative of this and then multiply it by the derivative of this. So again, over here, the 1 half we brought out front and take the derivative of log base 3 of x. That's 1 over ln of 3 times x. We multiply that to the 1 half. Then over here, this, when you take the derivative of log base 3 of u, that's going to be 1 over ln of 3 times u, which in this case was x plus 5. Then you have to multiply that by the derivative of x plus 5, which just becomes 1. And then you can simplify this. If you wanted them to have a common denominator, you would multiply this fraction by x plus 5 over x plus 5, and this fraction by 2x over 2x. You can then subtract the x and the 2x, and you get 5 minus x in your numerator, and you're done.